characterized by the absence of any context as well as by an ag aggressive subtone against Israel. Minimizing the Holocaust by comparing Israel with the Third Reich, using the blood libel myth as Palestinian children die, and the use of Zionist conspiracy theories are not rare. The research concluded, I quote, German media coverage of the conflict contributed to an anti-Semitic view of Israel among the German population. At the end of 2002, the Federal Center for Civic Education followed up with its own study. It was pointed out clearly, I quote, one can conclude that, that an important effect in media is to present Israel and its military power only to convey the impression that Israel is the aggressor. But then something strange happened, and during the official presentation of this survey, its results were officially disguised and played down. The opening lecture was held by a professor, Werner Stübel, from University Düsseldorf, who had lived many years in East Jerusalem and taught at Birzeit in University. He didn't say a sentence in, a, in his lecture, which was about 45 minutes, about Palestinian terror against Israel, but he stated many things about the, I quote, powerful Jewish lobby in the, in the United States. The attempt to discuss this lecture was stifled down with the words that the lecture begs the opinion of the Center for Civic Education, which is, by the way, directly connected to the German state. The conference went on not discussing anti-Semitic tendencies in German media, but the Israeli aggression and, it, and its inhuman behavior. And the audience nodded and applauded. <clears throat> now imagine you have breakfast, unfold your newspaper and look for the cartoon of the day. After the Janine operation in April, in April 2002, the liberal and serious Süddeutsche Zeitung printed a cartoon. Sharon was seen in front of an Israeli tank, which is marked Jewish, Jewish through Magen David. And on the left side, one can see a bulldozer carrying away dozens of skinny dead bodies. Stuff from the United Nations is not able to go there as Sharon in this cartoon shouts at them, go away, here's war. The bulldozer with the dead bodies is a picture clearly linked to the aftermath of the Holocaust as in liberated concentration camps, tens of thousands of dead bodies were carried by bulldozers into mass graves. The message of this cartoon, the Jews are likewise Nazis. The Ultra Berger, head of American Jewish committee in Germany had shortened this to Israel is under fire of the German media. As I collected material for this lecture, I nearly drowned in the bulk of paper which lay on my desk. And I would have had many, many more additional examples to show that anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism in Germany will be more and more a common cultural and political behavior, no matter if one is political left, right, or center. Borders are crossed, and behind them the gates are wide open toward anti-Semitism in each and every variety. <clears throat> Not to mention Islamic anti-Semitism, although, as I, as I said in the beginning, the threat through Islamic groups in Germany is not as massive as an example in France and Great Britain. So we can monitor various kinds of anti-Semitism in Germany today. The old traditional pre-Auschwitz anti-Semitism linked to nationalism and neo-Nazis. The post-Auschwitz anti-Semitism, and in this bunch we find even neo-Nazi anti-Semitism, neoliberal anti-Semitism. This means massive anti-Israeli attitudes and defense against financial and moral responsibility for the Holocaust. Leftist anti-Semitism linked with an anti-imperialistic and anti-globalization attitude. Anti-Semitism disguised by criticizing Israeli politics without a spe specific political viewpoint. Anti-Semitism and therefore anti-Zionism as an outlet of the new German position being as well victims of World War II and Jew hatred by Islamic groups. Since the 1967 statement of Jean Améry, and anti-Zionism has developed on fruitful soil. Today, German anti-Semites talk about human rights for the Palestinians, but they don't talk about the Israeli right to live after a terror attack 
in a bus or in a cafe. I have the impression that even the huge conference on anti-Semitism in the end of April was above all cosmetics. As historian Julius Schöps from Potsdam University said ironically in the newspaper Tageszeitung, I quote, protests against anti-Semitism organized by small groups did not get extensive attention in Germany. Resolutions by the German parliament to reject anti-Semitism were not supported by the parties in opposition. But all those ineffective actions are presented to the world as a strong defense against anti-Semitism. The truth is, no one is really interested in those matters and no one really cares. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, we will see already a lot of hands up. Frida Keat, Heimer Sis, Larry Pfeffer, Professor Rafi Israeli. Frida? I just wonder is there any voice, any intellectual opinion, any organizations, any think tanks, anyone in Germany fighting against this? Is there anything on the other side? It's mostly Jewish based. There's nothing coming out of German society. Some here and there, for sure, but it's mostly Jewish-based, like the American Jewish Committee, the German mm -hmm. branch, some organizations like these, but um, it's not a huge movement against anti-Semitism. Uh, I did a few seminars in Germany, and I discovered that 90% of the youth who attend Jewish seminars are from Russia. And uh, I understand that the policy of the community is to attract more and more Jews to Germany. How does this affect uh, anti-Semitism? And uh, uh, isn't it uh, too risky to invite more Jews if anti-Semitism is so deeply rooted in Germany? Um, yes and no. Yes, because um, there was an incident in, in, in Berlin as friends visited Berlin and they go to the synagogue on Shabbat and they wondered three, four, five people were there. And um, it was in, in the evening and so uh, they asked why are there so less people here. And they were told the Russian Jews are afraid of going out at night and having a kippah, wearing a kippah. But on the other hand, they must not be so afraid because this anti-Semitism is much more intellectual. It's not like there were incidents, but it's not like beating Jews on the street. It's much more an elitist intellectual anti-Semitism, which is now much more and more rooted even to the ordinary German who is not an intellectual. But it's not like going out and find some Jew and uh, smash him to the ground. Uh, Professor Rafi is really. Uh, First of all, thank you very much, Susan, for this very powerful message. Uh, my question is perhaps a multi layer, layer uh, in the sense that uh, you describe very well uh, what is anti Semitism in Germany. And when you have a poll, you ask individuals, mm -hmm. what do you think? And so he, he or she tells you what they feel about it. You have attacks, you have this or that writer or intellectual who, who says what he, who he or she says. But uh, it's another uh, issue uh, to deal with organized anti-Semitism. So to what extent these anti-Semitic feelings are expressed or manifested uh, orga organizationally? And, and the multi-layer thing is, is the following. First, locally in every town and city in Germany, nationally whether there is coordination between them and then i'll go beyond that to speak about inter-european or pan-european if the right wingers in the, in the netherlands and those in germany uh, do collaborate organizationally in uh, this and perhaps even across the atlantic to canada with likewise uh, organizations because then it will be much more threatening i believe so the neo-Nazis are for sure linked to some European neo-Nazi groups from Belgium to Poland to I don't know, but um, the intellectual anti intellectual anti-Semitism is not organized. I say not yet organized, but um, if such 
TV talk shows can appear and such statements can be said and the audience nods and applaud, applauses, so it's, it's, it's accepted but not organized. I guess that's a barrier which is too high for many Germans to say, now we organize this. It's somehow organized even in a, another layer like in this anti-globalization organizations. There is a manifest and huge anti-Semitism through the color of anti-Zionistic attitudes. So there you can find many people together, but it's not like an organization like in, in, in former times in the 19th and 18th century. Well, you know, the Muslim century. sites are, are interconnected via the internet. You, you have sites quoted all over the place, from Canada to Europe and back. And there it is certain, but the others are really sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Donchik, after him Dr. Robert Rosette. I wanted to uh, pursue the question about um, the Jews coming into uh, Germany. Um, the, although the, the uh, Russian Jews might be afraid to go out, um, I have noticed in my several trips there that um, they are not identified with the organized Jewish community for the reasons of definition of important to Jewish law. But if you if you had a crystal ball and you could envision if the numbers keep growing and if what you have identified keeps growing, I mean isn't that a certain collision course for these large numbers of Russian Jews that are coming into Germany in say twenty or thirty years? I spoke about Berlin, this incident in Berlin, because in, in Berlin the, the anti Semitism was even like um, uh, this one hundred percentage uh, rise and there was, were even some incidents in the subway, like uh, women wearing the Star of David, and they were beaten in the middle of the day, by the way. And um, so it's Berlin where Russian Jews are somehow more connected to the community, and somehow, because of this, more identification with the community are not going out, perhaps, than at night. But, um, by the way, in Frankfurt or in other, in other cities, it's not like um, that uh, the Russian immigration Im immigrants really identify with the community. That's that's right. And because of this, because they are somehow walking on another track, perhaps parallel to the Jewish community, but somehow their own track, um, they they come even in the future, I guess, to Germany because they don't identify their, themselves really as Jews. Uh. Robert, uh, Robert, and after him, Dr. Avner Falk. Robert? You would describe the situation which I think we're aware of. There's a great volume of Holocaust education and commemoration in Germany, and in many respects it has failed to achieve, I think, the things that many of us would like to see it achieve. Do you think that the Holocaust can no longer be used as a tool in fighting anti Semitism in Germany? I think this was the, the, the fallacy of many, many years to say if we. And, and because the Holocaust education is not that like it is in the curricula. You have the curricula and you say, wow, wonderful what they are doing. But it depends on the teacher if he takes only the suggested 45 minutes so he can show a documentary, or if he makes like projects on weeks and months. And um, so people in Yad Vashem mostly meet the, the well meant people, the teachers, who say, yes, we are doing something. But this is only a small peer group, and so there are many, many lessons. Um, in the Jewish Museum, I had three to four guidings a week. And so many teachers came there, and it was from the sixth grade to the uh, last grade um, before they left school. And many teachers say, as I asked them, what have you done for, to prepare the children for this, um, for this session here in the museum? Oh, I showed them Schindler's list. So they are left alone with the pictures of Schindler's List, and this is a preparation which is not, which is not um, based on some pedagogic thinking and on some pedagogic developments. But it is like I've done my duty. So this um, lack of preparation is the one thing, and the other thing is that um, there is not. Uh, I know what happened in the Holocaust, and so I love my my neighbors. That's a fallacy, and this is now the result of it. Um, Avner, and after him, Rabbi Moshe Edelman. Well, thank you for a very moving and 
interesting uh, lecture. It's a bit saddening too, of course, as you can imagine. But I want to uh, make a few points to put things in perspective and maybe clarify them and ask you to clarify them. One is about the rewriting of German history. I think this is not a new thing in the recent years. Uh, we know about Lotte, for example, trying to say the Germans suffered no less than the Jews and so on, and this has been going on for quite some time. And uh, it is understandable, I think, also, not that I'm justifying it, but trying to explain it, uh, that uh, German historians being under this very heavy pressure of guilt for the Holocaust, uh, some of them would try to uh, to, to uh, suggest another view of history. Now, uh, anti-Semitism as such, whether it's old or new, is really being, in German society, it's been very ingrained since the Middle Ages. You know the concept of the Judenzahl, and the Zaujut, and, and so on. Uh, One prototype was in Frankfurt. Yes, absolutely. On the bridge, and the, the, uh, the sculptures, the woodcuts, and so on. This has been going on for many centuries. Now, uh, this leads me to the Sigmund Freud Institute in Frankfurt, which you mentioned. And I wondered if, beside doing the survey that you mentioned, did they also offer some explanations? This, after all, is a psychoanalytic institute. And we know from Freud's own work and other work on anti Semitism about the very important role of scapegoating and projection, and conscious projection, in, in anti Semitism. So I wonder if that study also had something to say in that respect. Uh, another thing is the very interesting uh, contrast between the new, so-called new German historians and what we call the new Israeli historians. Because, you know, the new Israeli historians, in a sense, are doing the reverse of this. They are really, uh, some of them have tried to show as much as possible how much uh, the Arabs in 1948, for example, were victimized, uh, and not the Israelis were victimized. Uh, so, the Israelis come out often as the victimizers which is the opposite of what those Germ new German historians are doing. So it's an interesting thing in mm -hmm. itself. Because of this, I, I named them new historians. Yes, in that sense. But it's a reverse sense of our new historians, I think. Both and the Jewish. And then to, uh, and to put the things into uh, proportion and perspective. After all, there is a law in Germany against Nazism and anti-Semitism. I think it's one of the few countries in yeah. Europe, and maybe the only one, well, you cannot make anti-Semitic statements or Nazi statements without being punished for it by law, at least if the law is enforced. And so the question is, how much is the proportion between <coughs> all these very unhappy things that you presented to us and the reverse of that, that is, philo-Semitism and the protection of the Jew? First, for sure, these new historians are not popping up from the earth like out of the blue. But there was, um, for sure, Nolte, but it's now a massive trend. Nolte was so academic. Who likes to read Nolte, you know? Footnotes and this and this and that. But Dirk Friedrich has a very popular style. You can read it like a novel. Not a nice novel, but you can read it like a novel. And then he brought out this um, picture book about um, those uh, burning sites. And there were so many pictures in it that People say, why do you have to show those pictures? Uh, because they were in German archives, but not shown by decision, because it was really brutal pictures. He said, yes, we have to know the truth. So it's always, now he's like um, the outspeaking, uh, he's, he's uh, the one who speaks out the truth. And um, for sure, it's part of the history too. The Allied bombings, why does it happen? It's a topic, for sure. But to interpret it, like, um, there are nearly no perpetrators left, but only victims. And this um, paralyze, paralyze, uh, parallel um, pictures, you, you have to look in this book. And you, for sure, if you have some pictures in mind from the, the Holocaust, you see them. And so it's a very, very well done job to get rid of those pictures of the Holocaust and to implant the pictures of the Germans as victims. And um, the third question you ask? Well, I'm not but the proportion between the law okay. against yes. anti-Semitism mm -hmm. and also philo-Semitism and the anti-Semitic incidents and, and phenomena that you're describing. It's a matter of putting it in proportion. For sure you have these laws. 
But if those laws doesn't define anti-Semitism, say anti-Semitism is a bad thing, you have to fight it and you cannot speak it out. But it's like in opinion polls in 89. No one from the former GDR said anything against Israel because it wasn't questioned. And if you don't define anti-Semitism even in these ways, so you can speak out many things, you are not stopped by law. Because it's anti-Semitism, perhaps someone says, the Jews today has to be murdered, have to be murdered. Then, for sure, the law, the law came and said, put him in jail or give him a, something, money to, to, to pay to a Jewish organization. But if someone says some, something's anti-Semitic, disguised in anti-Zionistic um, costumes, the law isn't there. It's not anti-Semitism. It's only anti-Semitism if you perhaps wish uh, the Jews to be dead or something like this. And um, philo-Semitism, I'm very um, hesitating about this because it's, there was some, some former uh, Austrian Jewish writer, Robert Neumann, who emigrated um, and survived. And he traveled through German, Western Germany in the 1950s. And then he came back where he lived then and said, oh, first, they all love the Jews. Second, they didn't knew what happened. And third, his conclusion was, and uh, philo-Semitism is anti-Semitism on the other way around. Because on the one hand, you hate the Jews. On the other hand, you love the Jews. But you don't differ, you don't see human beings. You put them somehow in a box and write upon it good or bad. And if you are not fitting into this scheme, then the opinion turns around again. So if the Jews don't behave nicely, a philo Semite says, oh, they don't behave nicely, that's not good. They shall behave like I want them to behave. My picture of the Jews, this is what they need. And so philo is something which I'm very suspicious of. And um, organizations like the, the lady who asked me, Jewish organizations, some small groups here and there, but even this Christian Jewish um, groups for working together, this was implanted not by the Germans themselves, but by the American allies. So this was not like an idea the Germans after the war had, but it was an idea coming from, from the United States. And so even this is now more and more like a, an assembly for well-meaning Christians around them. Um, if there are 30 members, 29 are Christian, and you have one Jew or something like this. So it's not very effective. Uh. Moshe Edelman, the after Mr. Bode. For Moshe? Uh, I would like to mention two things. Uh, thank you very much for your very interesting uh, What you said now last, is it because that, that, that the Jewish community of Germany doesn't have people on the level who can talk against, or is it because the Jewish community of Germany again only is on its defensive? That is number one. Number two is, I'm asking, how do those people define anti-Zionism? Is anti-Zionism anti against a group of people who have settled on a land belonging to the Palestinians? Or is it because the Jewish people have settled there, taken the land of the Palestinians, and they should leave? and are welcome to come back from where they came. <laughs> to the first question, um, there are some intellectuals 
There is the, now the head of the Jewish community in Frankfurt, Salomon Kahn, who is really an intellectual and he has written two books, uh, it's two books with uh, collecting essays of him. And um, he has a very strong voice. He's printed in the Weekly Die Zeit and everywhere, but um, he's not powerful. Yes, he, he has a position and he's invited to the conferences and to the symposiums and to lectures everywhere. Um, but to quote Louis um, Schutz, but who cares? And um, there are some other writers and these people for sure. It's not an intellectual Jewish community like it was uh, up to the destruction. But there are some. And um, defensive or calm? Walking on both tracks. Defensive, but not openly proud. But there was now an interesting turn into, in, in this Salomon Khan's essays, he published an, an essay and um, stated there that it's a wrong thing to guess now, okay, we have to be on the track of assimilation again, because this is a huge trend, not only for the Russian Jews, but to say, okay, people doesn't have to know that we are Jews, it's um, better to be not so open. And he said, that's the wrong way. Assimilation has led to nothing, and we have to be rooted in Judaism and Jewish life. On the other hand, we have to try to live in this country. And he's one who doesn't say if the people are saying, yes, Germany, it's your homeland. And he says, no, I love Frankfurt, but I don't love Germany. So this is a new small trend that he says these things open, not to temper the Germans and say, yes, we love you. This is the one thing. And the other thing, anti-Zionism is um, defined as a movement against the bad Israeli politics. So not against the Jews, perhaps against the Israelis, but not against the Jews. Perhaps against um, Sharon and all his voters, but not against the Jews. So this is like this mantra, and then you ask the people, so um, what do you think? You ask them out of the blue, and what do you think about the Jewish communities and their attitude towards Israel? Oh, they shall not support them. So it's one pot, put them all in, and anti-Zionism is, if you look behind the curtains, really nothing else than anti-Semitism. And if there is critics against Israel, purely critics, this you find for sure too. And this is not a problem to, 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 to discuss the different various political opinions. That's not a problem. But uh, it's the problem that you don't find uh, those people too much. Mr. Bode, and then Chaya Herschkowitz. First of all, uh, thank you very much for the lecture. And hopefully, Lisa and I, we are the only Germans, Christians, and Jewish uh, uh, people listening to you and I must say I was very shocked to hear what's happening in the state of Germany and it's a false uh, impression what I had over the last years when I watched things developing in Germany. Uh, I would like first to make a remark to the uh, uh, question of the lady which you asked in the beginning. There are indeed uh, groups in Germany which are uh, working, not very organized sometimes and it doesn't represent all the majority of Germans but there are groups fighting anti-Semitism. We had in the year 2002, which you were speaking about quite a lot, when the whole Mödelmann affair.